sweet, beefy noodles. This one looks really simple, but I've got a few little techniques up my sleeve that make this noodle dish even more amazing. These are my hoisin beef noodles. Alright, so I have a problem, well I used to have a problem with beef noodles. Whenever I use beef mints for my noodles, I found that they got a little watery, they were kind of grey, and just not altogether really special. So I decided, how can I make my beef noodles more beefy? Well, this is the solution. <laughs> really simple, but works so well. So first we're going to start with the beef in the wok. And what I want to do here is really kind of char the beef and evaporate any of the juices. You'll see what I mean. Let's get going. I want a little bit of oil in here. Doesn't matter whether you're doing this in a wok or a pan, the technique is still the same. Now make sure this is like sizzling hot. I want to hear that beef as soon as it hits the pan. Now, one word on the beef. I do like beef with a little bit of fat and I think it actually works better with flavor and texture. So my beef is a little fatty. You want to see the smoke, hear the sizzle, it should be really dramatic. <laughs> Spread the beef out and then do your best not to touch it. I just said that and then I touched it, but just listen, don't do what I'm, <laughs> do what I'm doing, just listen and do what I'm saying. Uh, let the beef sit there and we're going to notice, and I'm starting to see it already, some of that liquid juiciness coming out. And it looks quite wet. So what I want to do is wait until that liquid evaporates and that's when we're going to start to get the nice chariness on our beef. Trust me. I keep trying to touch it. <laughs> it's really hard not to touch things. I'm going to put this put the spatula down. So when everything starts to smell kind of like a, a seared hamburger, take a look in the pan and you can see almost all of that liquid is gone, it's quite dry and I can see some lovely little brown bits starting to happen there. So the magic is happening, I'm just going to restrain myself a little bit longer, just wait for just a little more chariness. Okay, now get in there and See how we've got some colour there? I mean, it won't all be uniformly brown, but those brown chari bits will add so much more flavour and beefiness to the rest of our noodle stir fry. So now I'm going to go in with some onions. And the key here is not to dump everything in here at once. So I want to give my onions some time. Onions are just a little soft, starting to char a little bit, so I'm going to add some garlic. So we're kind of doing things a little bit backward because I would usually add garlic and onion into the oil and then my protein. Okay, toss that garlic through. And I don't want the garlic to burn, so I'm just going to give that a couple of tosses. And now in with some napa cabbage that I've got here, also known as Chinese cabbage or wombok, depending on where you are. I know, in Australia we have weird names for things. Wombok is such a weird name, but Wombok is what we call it in Australia. So there's some information that you might not have known. <laughs> Toss that around. All right, so now my shredded cabbage. Wow, I just added shredded cabbage. So now my shredded carrot. And at this point, you should be looking at a stir fry that is beautifully dry, so not watery. I can smell the beautiful, like, chari beef, and my cabbage and carrot are still a little tender, but my onion is nice and soft and sweet. So we've kind of got all these contrasting textures and flavors and everything already. And we're just going to pause there, turn the heat off. Let's do some noodle work. Now I've got some beautiful fresh Chinese egg noodles here. You could use some prepackaged ramen noodles if you've got them or um, even thicker noodles like Hokkien noodles, that's fine as well. The key here is that I don't want to overcook the noodles here because I want them to cook further in the pan and soak up all that sauce that we're going to add later. So just some boiling water in the noodles go. And after just a few seconds, I'm going to take the pan straight off over to my wok, turn that beef back on, 
and get the noodles straight in. And now for all the saucy stuff, I'm going to add in some oyster sauce, some hoisin sauce, some dark sweet soy sauce. This is for a little bit of colour. You could just use regular Chinese dark soy sauce as well. It doesn't have to be the sweet kind. And then my little secret ingredient here is a dash of white vinegar just to cut through the sweetness and add a little bit of kind of lift to the whole flavour. And now toss everything together. A bit of greenery here. I want some spring onion. Okay, now that is looking really amazing. I love that. And see, we're all concentrated in here because we got rid of all the liquid from the beef. So that sauce is really tasty, really concentrated, sticking to every strand of noodle, every little morsel of beef. Mm. A little bit more spring onion here, a little sprinkling of sesame seeds, Ooh, and that is one good looking plate of noodles. And of course I'm going to try it just, you know, to be either just cruel to you guys or just to let you know that, you know, they are really good. Mm. You know what hits you straight away is that kind of charry, intense sweetness of the sauce. And then you get the really beefy flavour coming through. Mm. Yum. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Beef noodles that actually taste beefy. Love it. I hope you guys love this one too. Mm, yum. Lucky I made a huge plate. <laughs> Just look at that red, peanutty, porky sauce. This is definitely the noodle soup you guys need to know how to make. My version of Shanghai hot sauce noodles. Okay, so you guys know me by now. I like all things noodle, noodle soups, spicy, porky, all the good things. This one combines everything that's good about those things into the one dish. Yay, so exciting. Uh, I love this one. The savory porky topping on this is like nothing else. Uh, let's get started on that savory porky topping first of all. Now we want to start off with a little bit of tofu. I've got some firm tofu here and I just want to cut that in half. I find so much joy in slicing tofu. I don't know why, it's just pleasurable. Now, cross like this. I want a nice sort of small dice here. And now let's get into the wok. The defining character of this dish to me is the beautiful sheen of bright red chili oil that magically appears in this sauce. And you need to start off with some oil to make that happen. Now some ginger. Some garlic. Just want to give that enough time for the garlic and ginger to start to become really fragrant. And now add the peanuts. Now I'm going to add in the pork. Now here in Thailand, the fatty pork, or what I call the good stuff, comes standard. Um, now if you're using a leaner pork here, just be aware you won't get as much of that beautiful sort of red sheen on the top of the soup at the end, so you might want to add a little bit more oil. Now I want to let this pork sizzle away so that we render out some of that good fatty stuff that has all the flavour. 
Now I need to add in the Doban Diang. So this is a bean and chili paste that you're gonna to need to search out at an Asian grocer or have a look online. But this is what gives us the beautiful red color and also the characteristic savory, salty, umami flavor in this dish. Now I know not all of you are gonna be able to get a hold of this. So what you can do is use Korean gochujang paste at a pinch. It's gonna be a slightly different flavor. It's gonna give you a good flavor nonetheless and that really beautiful red color. Now the real secret to cooking this dish I think is being a little bit patient in between adding the different ingredients. I really want the chili paste to kind of cling to and really season that pork mix before I add anything else. So I'm gonna let that simmer away just a couple of minutes before I start adding extra bits and pieces. Okay, so see how we've got that beautiful red oil starting to collect in pools on top of that yummy pork? That's what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna add some extra seasoning here. I've got some soy sauce, some sugar. And then I wanna deglaze that pan with a little bit of Chinese Shaoxing wine. You could leave the cooking wine out if you want to but I love the little bit of extra flavor it gives. Now again, allow that pork to really take on all of those seasonings and the flavor, and you'll be able to smell as it cooks, the cooking wine aroma will start to dissipate. That's what I'm waiting for. So now I'm gonna add in some chicken stock and just a little bit to start with. And again, let's let this pork do its thing. We're giving a lot of love to this sauce, guys, but it's gonna to be totally worth it in the end. So let that simmer for another three or four minutes until the liquid has almost all but evaporated. All right, so the one problem with this dish is having to wait around for so long when it smells so good. We're nearly there, guys. All right, some more chicken stock here. Oh, look at that color, so gorgeous. Now, I wanna let this bubble away for 30 minutes to really develop all those awesome flavors. Come back soon. So my pork is now a few minutes away. I'm gonna get my noodles done. Now I'm using these Chinese wheat noodles here. Basically you're looking for a noodle that's about the sort of thickness of angel hair pasta. Into some boiling water. Now these don't take long to cook and there is nothing worse than an overcooked soggy strand of noodle. So be vigilant. When these are just tender, I'm gonna pull them out. And then I don't always do this, but I quite like the flavor of sesame oil in this dish. So I'm gonna to toss a little bit of sesame oil in here, mix those noodles through, and that's gonna stop them from sticking together as well. Now these go straight into my serving bowl. And now let's take a look at our beautiful porky sauce. You can see the liquid here has reduced by about a third, which means we're getting some good concentration there. The flavor, let me just try. Wow, that is so good, guys. <laughs> oh, this is the kind of soup you need to be eating regularly, I think, truly will make you very happy. Now I'm gonna Pop in my cubes of tofu now. I like to put them in at the end because I don't want them to sort of boil and disintegrate in the soup as it cooks. I'm gonna do a little bit of adjusting here. I'm gonna add a little bit more chili powder for my liking and a pinch of salt. Now we're ready to get this good stuff into a bowl. A little sprinkling of spring onion just to finish everything off. And there you go guys, look at that little or large, in my case, bowl of heaven right there. Oh, noodle soups make me so happy, especially spicy ones. That beautiful chili pork flavor. That's 
Supra is so incredible. Wow, it really hits you in the back of the throat with some spice as well. So good. And then the peanuts, I really think the peanuts really kind of make this dish. So good, guys. You really need to make this one. So this is not the most famous Thai noodle dish, but once you've tried it, you will be wanting to come back for more and more. We're gonna make Pad Bun Sen. All right, let's start off with the protein first, because we're gonna do just a really quick little marinade. I'm using chicken today, chicken thigh, but you could use pork or prawns or even tofu as well. Totally up to you, but I just wanna season my chicken with a little bit of fish sauce and a little bit of black pepper. Let's give that a mix. Okay, now just let that sit for a little while while we prepare our noodles. The special part of this dish is that we're using a particular type of noodle. These are bean vermicelli, also known as bean thread vermicelli, glass noodles, cellophane noodles, mung bean noodles. They have a lot of names. But the great thing about them is that when they're cooked, they sort of have this translucent color to them and they take on a beautiful amount of flavor and they're nice and chewy too. I love these. So to prepare them though, uh, you wanna do it in a particular way so you don't get clumpy, gluggy noodles when you go to stir fry them. So this is what they look like and I'm gonna put them into a large bowl. And the mistake a lot of people make with these noodles when they're stir frying them is that they cook them in boiling water. They're just gonna to turn to mush if you do that. So what you want is just some warm water. It's not boiling, it's just steaming a little bit. And I'm gonna cover the noodles with the water. Just use a fork to sort of spread them out a little and they will literally need only five minutes. Don't be tempted to leave them for longer. As soon as they're soft, we wanna get them out of that water. So while the noodles are doing their thing, we're gonna do some extra bits and pieces for the noodles. I'm gonna be using some spring onion. Okay, just slice those ends off. And I wanna keep the spring onions into nice battens so that they're almost like a vegetable rather than a sort of garnish in this dish. Okay, so that's those. And then I've got this re these really large red chilies and these are very mild. So whatever mild, large chili you have in your area, that's the one to use here. Or you could even use capsicum as well. I don't even want the seeds in here uh, because I don't want any sort of spice at all. I'm just after that sort of color and that sort of capsicum flavor. Okay, now I also want some eggs for this dish and you just wanna whisk those till they come together. Now, stir fry sauce. So, really simple, oyster sauce. And the thing with this dish is that it shouldn't be really saucy. So we want just the barest whisper of enough sauce to cover and coat each of those noodle strands without it being very soupy or saucy. So a little bit of oyster sauce, a little bit of fish sauce, and then a little dash of sweet dark soy sauce. I like that one for color and that little bit of molasses flavor it adds. And then just a little dash of sugar. Now, my mom always added a little dash of sugar, just like a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of pepper to all of her sauces. So I do it too, uh, but you can leave it out if you like. Okay, now let's have a look at our noodles. I can tell that they're really nice and soft, but not overly sticky or clumpy. But these look perfect. So I'm just gonna drain them out into another bowl. And then to make stir frying even easier, I like to cut these into more manageable lengths. Just with some scissors, just cut through. Otherwise I find that's very inconvenient to be picking up big strandfuls of noodle as you're trying to stir fry. So at this point, we're ready to do the sizzling. We have all of our ingredients ready to go. I've got some garlic, onion, and carrot to add to all the other stuff that we've got prepared. And I'm gonna heat up my wok. Now, if you don't have a wok, just a really large frying pan is best for this. Um, what you want is to have a really large surface area for stir frying so it doesn't steam. This is not a dish where you want lots of sauce, as I said before. Okay, now when my wok is hot, I'm gonna add in some oil and my garlic and my sliced onion. I just love that smell already. Ah, so good. I just toss these around a little bit, just a minute or so. Okay, onions are just starting to color, so I'm going to add in my chicken. So the key whenever you're adding protein to your wok is spread it out so that it cooks as quick as possible. Okay, now give everything a toss. Okay, now we're ready for the carrot. Okay, now to cook the egg, I'm gonna push everything to the side, make some space, 
And then I'm just going to add a little bit more oil into that space that I've created in there. And then in goes my egg. Now use your spatula to push the egg out and around. What we're trying to do is create like a scrambled egg situation here, but we still want chunks of egg. We don't want too much of a scramble. So I'm just letting that egg set a little bit. And now toss everything together. Okay, time for my noodles. And our stir fry sauce. I'm gonna to toss all of that together until the noodles are evenly coated. Okay, now for the extra colour that we made, our chilies and the spring onion. They go in, toss that through, and we are done, ready to eat. Thank goodness, because I am hungry. Ah, oh, look at those noodles. I love the texture, and look at that beautiful colour. Mm, can't wait for you guys to try this one.